Hey, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we've got a new episode about identity coming up. Oh, hello there. Yes, welcome. Welcome to the show. This is Contra Thoughts, and we're going to be talking about something that is a trend on TikTok, not the clock. I'm sure most of y'all know TikTok, of course. I'm not on TikTok, so don't worry, you're not missing anything. Uh, I don't know if I ever will be, maybe. But I can barely handle this. There has been a trend, as we'll watch here in a moment, on TikTok. And... Well, let's just watch and see. This is a clip from Wretched Radio. TikTok has a hot new trend. And as a Christian, you're going to hear about this trend, perhaps couched in contemporary terms, but it's as old as demon possession. In fact, that's precisely the title. TikTok's hottest trend is as old as demonic possession. This is an article from The Federalist. (laughs) Now, maybe I'm confused about The Federalist, but I didn't think they would be writing something with rather profound Christian insights. Might I suggest that as you hear about this new TikTok trend, we instead, at least with this situation, you got to feel some pity. You've got to feel for these people. The trend is to post on YouTube millions of views of people who switch personalities and put it on YouTube. They videotape themselves switching personalities. It used to be called multiple personality disorder. Well, we've had to contemporize that because no old name is good. It's now called disassociative identity disorder. Did disassociative identity disorder. DID expresses multiple personalities, sometimes with great variation. The different personalities have different names, interests, ways of talking, and gender identities. DID used to be known as MPD, multiple personality disorder. Now, this is this is one that should cause us to go, oh, the brokenness, the effect of the fall, and maybe demon possession, and maybe child abuse. That seems to be the pattern that people who believe that they sometimes have a legion, I'm sorry, hundreds of different personalities inside of them, it's because they were tortured as a child. That's wickedness of the highest order. And that should cause us to hear what is happening as an apparent trend in our culture they believe are as genuine as anything else. And now here's where it it also reveals itself to be something that is going to be forwarded with the same methodology that has been used to forward every other anti-biblical ideology these days. What is the, the oomph behind this and a group of people with something called DID that want it to be normalized? They don't want help. They want you to accept it, not see them as a threat, not put them on the DSM-5, but instead to say that's their truth. We're living in a culture where every individual is defining their own truth, believing their own truth. And that is showing itself even with people with DID. Hey, this is me. So you have to accept it. Several TikTok and YouTube accounts the the accounts of such broken people who refer to themselves as a host or system of multiple beings, have millions of online followers, and they exhibit various personalities for online notoriety in the guise of educating and promoting awareness. In a Vice article about this disorder published six years ago, one afflicted person refers to the body as the meat car. The nine members of her system simply take turns driving it around. People hmm, refer to themselves using plural pronouns or as a mix of single and plural pronouns. Sound familiar? Any Bible? Okay. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> um, 
I mean, I, it takes a lot to shock me. It really does. And, you know, we could easily say, you know, look at our culture. Our culture, we're just, like, it's, we're total first, first century. You know, first century Corinth, Rome, Ephesus, these places, they're just wicked. You know, look at all the, the rampant immorality and the homosexuality and, and the idolatry and the bestiality and all the just craziness, right? And, in, in, and all that much is true. But what we haven't seen, at least not in the light, but now we are. Todd Friel here of Wretched Radio. Great uh, show. He's been around a long, long time. Uh, lots of good content there. Notice the things he covers. What, is, what does one woman say? Nine personalities. And they call the body a meat car. And each one takes a turn. I mean, like, seriously. That's That's... That literally is demonic possession. Literally. Right? Now, of course, secularists and, you know, fake Christians who would, you know, try and be high and mighty and I'm a, you know, orthodox or I'm a mainline or whatever, uh, respectable Christians who don't believe the Bible would say, well, what you're seeing now is reality. And what you look at the Bible is that is personality disorder or multiple personality disorder, or, you know, uh, uh, disassociative disorder and so on. Yeah, but no, it's not. (laughs) And here's why. Because Luke 8, 29. For he, that is Jesus, had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it had often seized him and was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion. A legion is a thousand soldiers in that day. A thousand. Because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go to the abyss, that is Tartarus, that is the great deep that is mentioned in the book of Revelation, where extra wickedness and extra demonic evilness is locked up and chained away. But interestingly enough, there's actually uh, many who believe that's actually where the fallen angels of Genesis 6 and others that mentioned Jude and in Peter Those are the ones that Jesus went to speak who are now in prison that Jesus, uh, Peter, and Jude both mentioned. That they're actually locked up. That there is a certain category of fallen angel that is far more powerful than is actually in prison. And the demons are kind of these scared, skittish things that still exist and run around today kind of like, you know, wild dogs. They don't really do that very much. They're not Dobermans or something. They're, you know, kind of like yippy little dogs that are just annoying and will influence, but they're not nearly as powerful as fallen angels. So there's two different, I would contest there's two different entities, not just people will often say, well, there's just demons or there's just this or this. But I would say there's both, both demonic possession, which we see in the New Testament. And we see that clearly today. Todd Friel, thank you very much for this. Um, this article that he references, and he also references one from six years ago in Vice. Which, but nevertheless, they say not to send us into the abyss. But they're evil. These demons, this legion, they don't want to go to the abyss. I guess because they'll be locked up, because they'll see other more powerful demonic entities that are the principalities and powers that are chained away, perhaps. Verse 32 And now the herd of many swine, remember swine are pigs, they're nasty, unclean animals. Jesus shouldn't be hanging out with anywhere near a herd of swine, but of course he is, because he came for everyone. Feeding on the mountain. So they, that is the demons, begged him that he would permit them. Notice that. Jesus has power over these demonic entities. So these women, these men are on YouTube and TikTok and everything else. They need help, not just psychological help. It is a disorder, but it's far more of a spiritual disorder. And we'll talk about the implications of why this is or why they went there to begin with. The herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. So interesting, the demons, right, they get cast out of one man and go into a herd of pigs, probably, you know, 50, 100, 200 pigs, to then possess all these pigs. And then they go kill them in the lake. 
It's a very strange story. Acts 16. And it happened as these, 1616, and it happened as these were going to the place of prayer, a slave girl having a spirit of divination. Notice that. A spirit of divination met us. This is Luke writing Acts, and he was a companion with Paul later on in the ministry, who was bringing her masters much profit by fortune telling. Which, just by the way, fortune telling, uh, psychic readings, all that stuff, I believe actually does happen in some respects. But of course, the people who are saying it, you know, the crystal ball and all this other stuff, no one actually says the power in which they're doing it. They're not really revealing it. I think most of the time they're charlatans, they're fakes. But just like magic, just like other things, they are, there is a small portion, I believe, that are tapping into a spiritual realm that are actually convening with demonic entities. This gets weird, right? And we live in a supernatural world. We don't live in a sterile, naturalistic world. And as a Christian, we must be against that notion that everything we see is all there is. There's nothing else. There's no spirituality. There's no uh, um, invisible realm. There's no demonic powers and entities. Most of the Bible is radically trash if we go that route. I mean, just most of, I mean, second half of Ephesians, for example. We fight against not flesh and blood, Paul says. Well, what? I thought we were fighting against the Democrats. I thought I thought those stupid Republicans who don't love anybody and hate immigrants. I thought we were fighting against them. I thought we were fighting against people who blah, 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 blah. No. We're fighting against principalities and powers. In fact, let me just read it since it's on my mind. This is the end of Ephesians 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. And Paul doesn't leave it there. But against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, taken up, take up, therefore, the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand firm. That's who we fight against. That's who we fight against. And that's the goal. Not to fight against people, atheists, who, who don't have the truth and are just rejecting, you know, God doesn't exist and I hate him. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, right? Then, if you don't believe in God, why are you so angry about it? <laughs> just eat, drink, for tomorrow you die. And, you know, some atheists do do that. But by and large, many don't. They write books and have blogs and YouTube channels and they argue against something that doesn't exist. But of course, God does exist. And of course, he's placed a knowledge of himself in everyone, including the atheist. And he calls out everyone everywhere to repent. Just most people don't want to because they don't want to give up their sin. That's just what it is, plain and simple. It's really not that hard. Not to trivialize it, but it's not that hard. It's not that difficult. It's just, it's simple. But these two instances, there's many more, but these two instances, Legion, right, for example... Now, let me just double check that. Excuse me. So, gotquestions.org cites Mark 5. Uh, in common usage, a legion, a legion was the largest unit, the largest unit of the Roman army. At that time, a legion averaged 5,000. Aye, 5,000 fighting men. Though it could have had thousands more or fewer. Now, obviously, does that mean there's 5,000 um, demons in this person, in these people, with a mul multiplicity of personalities? No. Does it mean even the guy in the Bible had 5,000? No. It means he had more than one. It means he had, you know, probably dozens and dozens and dozens. And that's where, you know, sometimes you get super hyper literal with your Bible interpretation. You get lost. No, no, no. That's, you don't need to get lost. The, the gist is you shouldn't be demon possessed, right? That's probably obvious. But this guy is demon possessed. These demons are oppressing this man, a single man, and there's demons controlling him. Well, we see this now with this article that Todd Frill mentions there on his show. So what are the implications of this? So scripturally, the Bible deals with reality. Remember that. The Bible deals with reality. The Bible is reality. And because of that, we then have to excavate out. We have to pull out passages and the context and knowing what it's saying. Well, of course, 
Acts is talking about the ministry of the apostles and the growth of the church. So we see that there. And of course, we saw that in Luke as well in the gospel, that Jesus is proclaiming the good news. He's living his life, his three and a half year ministry and so on. And he encounters many people. And of course, he heals them. But Todd Friel mentioned something very specific, that this is, and I could rabbit trail very quickly, but this comports with several things that I've seen over the years, rumors, conspiracy theories, uh, other such things that you think a little weird. You know, you look at Hollywood and you see just the weirdness, the craziness with something like Michael Jackson, you know, the Macaulay Culkins, um, Corey Feldman, and many other people talking about child I'm not going to use the word because of the algorithm. Uh, Starts with a P. Child abuse in the worst possible way. You can use your imagination if you need to. And that, not not only that, but also being places like theme parks in Disneyland, uh, where children would disappear for a time and then be back with their family and everybody's terrified and scared and the kid has some strange story about being touched and abducted and this and that and dark room and, you know, candy and all this other stuff. Well, we just saw that there's actually a dozen or two dozen people at Disney World in a child trafficking, sex trafficking ring sort of thing. That's I don't have the story. That's not what we're talking about. But I literally just saw this yesterday in here in the beginning of August 2021 that there have been people caught as, again, start starts with the P, um, ends with file. So there's a, there's a link there, you know, you know, we can talk about Walt Disney himself and kind of all the weirdness and the suspicion and stuff going on. But then we also see other things where we hear about Hollywood, the big elites. We hear about people being abducted, child actors, you know, we could go crazy with the child, um, pseudo child sacrifices, the hidden, uh, meetings of the elites, the people who run the big tech companies and media and politics and all these other things. They do mock human sacrifices, mock, quote unquote. It gets nuts very fast when you start to encounter the spiritual realm. Because these demons, these demonic powers always promise something. They always promise more power, more eternal life. There's rumors of people when they consume the uh, parts of young people that they will rejuvenate their life, you know, everlasting life, new life. Now, of course, new life comes strictly from Christ, and you must repent and believe in the gospel to get that new life. That's how new life, but of course, what would demonic powers do? They would lie about it. Yeah, you have to sacrifice that thing to me, which of course we see throughout the scripture, especially the Old Testament, (laughs) you shouldn't sacrifice. I'm actually starting a series on the Ten Commandments, and that's one of the things that we're looking at routinely. Don't sacrifice to idols. Don't go there. And it's not just in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, where the Ten Commandments are mentioned, but throughout in Leviticus and other parts of Exodus, in Deuteronomy, in in, in Numbers, in Genesis even. Don't sacrifice to idols. Satan has, like, literally only a couple plays, and he plays them over and over and over and over again because people are stupid. Because we live only 60, 80 years. Satan's been around a lot longer. And people quickly forget. And the people who remember, he kind of, you know, will cast it in a new light. He'll put a new blanket over it, a different filter. It's like, oh, no, 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 that's totally different. We live in the age of science. We live in the age of naturalism and, 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 and uh, skepticism. And no, 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 this is just a, dis- this is just a disorder. And then now we have people in this article that Friel's saying, no, 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 we're fine. We don't need any help. So it's no longer even a disorder. The th- same thing they did with transgenderism very recently and homosexuality 40 years ago. All these things were disorders because they were seen as some sort of mental something. Now, it's not just a mental something. It's also very much a spiritual something where people are living in sin. Well, this case with multiple personality disorder, these people are in fact abused. And just like I mentioned with all the things with Hollywood and theme parks and Disney and all the other craziness, Whether, I mean, again, you have to remember, like, if you hear a conspiracy theory, there's some truth to it, even if it's only like 5% true. There's still a reason why the conspiracy is going on. When conspiracies happen, when something gets trumped up, whether it's 9-11, JFK, moon landing, whatever, there is some reason, even election fraud, there's some reason why, and we can then see how people react to those conspiracy theories. 
Most of the time, conspiracy theory pops up, and the standard narrative, the normal story, is to just dismiss it outright. But the question you should always ask, not just say, oh, conspiracy theory because people are evil, and that's probably true, and we love little conspiracy theories. We all do, right? They're all kind of fun to watch. A lot of them are probably, um, you know, mostly wrong. But I guarantee you they're not all wrong. And so we see and hear about these things with juveniles, with children, this, this weirdness. And then stuff like this happens. There have been, I could go on and on about the level of, of um, testimonials. And you can find some on YouTube. Testimonials of adults, people like me or older, who reference them who referenced themselves as a kid. And like, oh yeah, I was in a dungeon and this. And they would torture me. They would do this. My stepmom did this thing to me. And they would touch my privates. And they would do this. And basically to split your personality. You want to get crazy? Look up MK Ultra. The born identity. That is based on reality. Where they take a person and they split them. And then they split the split and so on and so forth. We saw this with the movie Identity from like 15 years ago. John Cusack. Um... It's, it's not a new thing, but it's more than just physical. It's also very much spiritual. And so I would contest that these people are splitting a personality, unbeknownst to themselves. Sadly, many of these children, because children are very vulnerable, Jesus says we should be like a child. We should come humility. We should come just trusting God. We should have a much um, more disposition of a child, not an old man, right? Jesus never talks about an old man and this and this and this or an old woman. It's usually always in the negative. Not to say old people are bad. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, though, is the disposition of belief, of trust, is of a child. I've got children. You might have children. Think about it. Do, you, do your children trust you? They have no reason not to, right? Until they get in the world and they have other people tell you or tell them that you're not trustworthy. And maybe you do let them down. We're all sinners. Sometimes we do let them down. Then we need to come and repent. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, child. The point is, these children, these multiple multiple personalities and other things are being split. And I would contest, not only are they being split, but they're somehow away. And again, you can look it up. There's a lot more demonic possession people talking about it as an adult when they had things as a kid and having hearing voices, being influenced. I mean, this language is exactly what we see with demonic possession. So it's, it's not a laughing matter. It's not a matter of just, well, you know, no big deal. Leave these people alone. No, not at all. These people desperately need help. Everyone needs the gospel, and especially these folks. But now they're flaunting it. Oh, look at me. I've got, I'm famous because of my split personality, my identity. The meat car. We're driving around the meat car. Nine different identities. Nine different identities. Different genders. Now we say they, right? This is all getting garbled up and confused with the gender identity, the 72 or 96 or whatever nonsense genders there are, supposedly. Of course, there's only two. Everybody knows that. We just are told by certain people that we should believe a lie. Well, we shouldn't bear false witness, ten, ninth commandment. So, sorry, not going to lie. And you shouldn't either. Don't lie. Don't be forced to lie to people because of their feelings. What about your feelings? What about God's truth? What about the truth? There's more. We could keep going. Um, <clears throat> but if you're interested, you could look up, like I said, on YouTube, split personality, adults with uh, disorders. Um, I don't know exactly what to search, but you'd probably be able to find it. I, I'm, I'm not going to link anything just because I don't really want to promote that. Obviously, you're free to do that. But there have been too many places, too many times where adults have talked about being molested, being abused as a child and having a different personality and switching and feeling this and feeling the pressure, feeling oppression, feeling feeling differences, feeling these certain things, saying and doing things that were not the case. I mean, there's instances of people speaking other languages, for example. I don't believe that's just some natural phenomenon. That's a supernatural phenomenon. Do demons not know other languages? Demonic powers and entities? Of course they do. Do they not know if they're going to talk, you know, when somebody lived 200 years ago in Victorian England, for example, and they can influence the person? And we look at ghosts. We look at alien encounters. All the trickery. Remember, the enemy is a liar. He's been lying from the beginning. He's the father of lies. And if he can convince people that they're doing something else, 
that well, God doesn't really exist. Jesus, you know, he, there's many ways to God. Or if he does exist, Jesus is, no, uh, you know, and just constant distraction. That's not my goal. My goal is to help you be against the world, to see what the world is doing and, and discern it and offer grace, offer God's word as a solution. Because really, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. Not a certain group of people who believe, all who believe. But you have to believe. It's not about works. It's not about what you're doing. It's not about praying so many times a day or giving so much money or anything else. But simply belief in Christ Jesus who came into the world to save sinners. That's it. That's what it's about. And he will deliver you. And we can see here that in Acts in particular, or even in Luke 8, that he will eradicate your demonic possession and heal you. So if you have split personality, you know somebody who does, Jesus can heal them. But that person must be willing to turn to Christ. They must be willing to let the physician heal them. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. Share this. It helps with the whole system. Uh, YouTube tells it. Other people... If you like it, other people like it. So you watch it to the end. Uh, of course, it's the end. You've probably watched it. But like and uh, like and comment as well. It really helps me out. So again, be against the world for the sake of the world. Take care. Bye.